we're talking about scatter plots and correlation. Uh, this whole unit is all about starting with a scatter plot and then analyzing the data. Okay, the relationship between two quantitative variables is what a scatter plot shows and what we will be examining. We have a response variable which is your y-axis and your explanatory variable. Sometimes you'll be able to kind of crisscross them where you could put one as the explanatory, one as the response or vice versa, but sometimes it's going to be obvious if we want uh, you know, the temperature to explain the amount of coat sales or the temperature to explain the amount of ice cream sales. The temperature would be the explanatory uh, um, variable. Response would be the ice cream sales or the coat sales. And hopefully you would find that as the temperature increases for a specific day, a temperature, you would have a specific amount of ice cream sales. And this is your scatter plot. And we'd be able to see possibly a association. Now, something that has a positive association, as your X or your explanatory variable is going up, your Y or your response variable would be going up. Just like we said here, temperature and ice cream sales. As the temperature gets higher, more people like to stand in line uh, and eat ice cream, uh, stand in line at an ice cream shop and get ice cream. Okay, that is a positive association. A negative association would be as your X is going up, your Y would be going down. A negative association would look like this. As my X is going up, my Y is going down. Let's talk about something that could be associated with temperature that would be negatively associated. As temperature goes up, what would go down? Coat sales. It's a great example. Okay, so that would be something that is negatively associated. And if we plotted temperatures on this x-axis, we would be able to plot coat sales on the y-axis and see this negative association. Okay? Now, the way we're going to describe these scatter plots are the following. We'll talk about the form, whether it is going to be linear or if it's nonlinear. We saw, you saw in the uh, video that sometimes you'll have something that's curved. We will be most likely, we'll, we'll mostly be sticking with things that we can describe linearly in this class. The direction is the positive or the negative association. We will talk about the strength of the association, whether it is strong, moderate, or weak. It could be strong, moderate, or weak in the positive or the negative direction. And also, we're going to note any outliers that are present, any point that falls outside the overall pattern. Okay. Now, here's an example of a data set. We have age of, uh, you know, children and their heights. We would say that the age is hopefully going to explain the heights. So the response variable would be the y's, of course. The explanatory variable is the x's. We would hope that the age is going to explain the height. Okay, well now we're ready to make a scatter plot of the data. What you need to do is in your calculator go into stat, edit, type these into L1 and L2. So they're next to each other. Okay? Remember, if you have a calculator and you already have data in your stat, go ahead up to the top of your list and press clear and then enter. And then all of a sudden, all your data will be uh, reset. Okay? And go ahead and type this in. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the heights.
Ooh, let's reset your calculator then. So second plus 712. Really? Yeah. Go to the left. That's crazy. Craziest thing I've ever seen. Okay, do we have all of our data in the list? Now, well, you just got to work with L2 and L3. It'll, it'll be all right. You will go into your stat plots. Stat plots. So, second Y1 is how we get the stat plot. You'll turn your plot on, and then you will make sure you go to the correct type, which is these dots in this top left corner. So remember, if you're on something else, you need to go left or right. Press Enter. Now, make sure you add your X list, your explanatory variable, as L1. If this is something else, you might have to turn it back to L1. Right now, my calculator says L3. So I need to turn it back into L1. I'll go second. And L1 is right above 1. And I see my Y list is 2. What we will do is that we'll be able to graph L1 as the X's, L2 as the Y's. You can graph and remember to zoom 9, which is zoom stat. Okay, and there you go. You see age and height. So L1, L2, make sure you go to stat plots. Make sure you have it on. Make sure you zoom stat. Okay, so this is interesting. As we get older, it looks like we get taller. Now it's very important if we sketch it kind of like this, we will list off this as age, and this is going to be our height. And our ages starts at like 1 and goes to 6. Our height starts in like the 70s and goes to like the 120s, something like that. If you press trace, if you press trace, you can see your individual items. When you are 1 year old, the average is 73.6 centimeters. 2 years old, 3 years old, 4 years old. Does anybody need help getting their stat plot up on their calculator? I want to come around and make sure everybody has that stat plot up and it's working. How do you get to stat plot? It's above Y1, so go second stat plot. Okay, good. Stat plot's on. You have the correct guy on. You got L1, L2. So now you're ready to graph. And you need to zoom and go all the way down to zoom stat. Good. Your zoom stat is 9. Okay, great. Okay. Now, this is interesting, okay. As age goes up, height goes up. So we look to see a very strong association. Is it a positive or a negative association? Positive, right? So we can describe this relationship. It is a strong positive association between age and height. I forgot one thing, right? So we want to talk about our form, our strength. We want to talk about our association. We forgot to say that it's a strong, positive, linear association. Between age and height, okay? 
the strength is here. We have the form here. We have the association or the direction here. And we don't have any outliers, so we're good. Okay, that was kind of all the stuff we went through. All right, well, what would we expect the data, or would we expect the data to allow us to make a good prediction for the average height of seven year olds? So it looks like as you get older, you get taller. Could I reasonably predict, kind of going this way, what the height of a seven year old would be? Right, yeah, makes sense. It'd probably be a little bit taller, right? So I'd say, yeah. But what about 50 year olds? Could I continue to go up and up and up and up and up so that when I have 50, I'd have this really, really tall person? No, right? That's not realistic. Eventually, we stop growing, and all of a sudden, this linear relationship is no longer linear. If I went from ages 1 to ages 30, we would not see a linear relationship. It would probably be something that's curved. Okay? So this process is called extrapolation. It is predicting outside the range of the data given. This is, this is dangerous. Okay? It should be avoided or be done with extreme caution. We should not try to predict the height of a 50-year-old using the heights of 1 through 6-year-olds as our, our, uh, our data set, okay? because it will tell you that a 50-year-old is going to be super huge, and we know that's not true. Okay, now let's talk about correlation. Correlation, and we're going to be using this data set in a, uh, in a second. Correlation is your numer numerical descriptor of the strength of a association. What do we want? The strength of a linear association. It's a numerical descriptor. Okay, and we watched the video about, these, about this correlation coefficient. We know correlation is between negative 1 and 1. This is very, very important. The negative R indicates a negative association. A positive R indicates a positive association. If R is 0, there is no association. The closer the value of R is to negative 1 or 1, the stronger the correlation. Rough guidelines for strength. If you are above 0.8, you are very strong. If you are between 0.5 and 0.8, you're moderately strong. If you're less than 0.5, you're weak. This is going from, you know, negative 0.8 to negative 1. That would be extremely strong in the negative direction. If you had between 0.8 and positive 1, that would be extremely strong in the positive direction. Here are examples of different scatter plots. We could talk about the correlation and then what a corresponding R value we would see if we calculated the correlation. Let's go to the extremes here. Now, how do we tell if the correlation is strong? Well, if I can draw a line and pass through a lot of my points, we're talking about strong correlations. As I draw a line and there's less and less points that are passing through my line, we are talking about weaker and weaker correlations. This, every single point gets passed through the line. This would be extremely strong. And positive, so we'd say the R is close to 1. The one previous is still strong. I wouldn't say it's extremely strong anymore, but it's strong. It's positive. I would say it's probably close to probably 0.8. Just guessing here. Maybe even 0.9. Here? Still strong, 
but it's probably moderately strong. And we're talking about an R of maybe like 0.7. Okay. We can do the same thing in the negative direction. This would be an extremely strong but negative association. This would be an R value that is negative 1 because it's a negative association. Okay? And as we get further and further away from our lines that we create, we would see our R values would also decrease. This would be, I would say, definitely strong. I would say probably around this value, just in the negative, probably negative 0.8. This, I would say, is less strong. So I would say it's almost weak. Weakish in the negative, I would say the R is probably around like negative 0.5, probably between you know being weak and moderately strong. Okay. Now let's calculate correlation. Let's go back up to the top. We're not even going to change the page. Calculating correlation. If I could get rid of this, I would, just so I can give you some notes on calculating correlation. You guys can just write uh, in smaller ways. Okay. Let's see if there is correlation or a relationship between age and weight. Why don't we type in age as L1 and weight as L2? Okay, so I go into stats. I'm going to clear out my list. You go up to the top, clear, enter, go to the top of L1, clear, enter, and let's type in the age and the weight. Okay, first we can graph. I can zoom, stat, and I can see. Okay, it's helpful to be able to visualize your scatter plot. So we have ages of people and their weights. We want to see if you get older, do you get bigger? Or if you're younger, are you skinnier? Do we see a relationship? No. It seems to be no association, no relationship, which means our correlation is probably going to be close to what? If I have no association between two things, what is the value of the correlation that we're trying to find? Zero. Good. Okay. So this is looks like no association. R is going to be close to zero. That means down here, and I forgot to do that, these guys, where the, there's no association, the R is close to zero. For both of these guys, the R is close to zero. You cannot pass through a lot of our dots here. I forgot to get to that. Okay? So here's no association. Here there's a strong association, but it's a curved association. It'd be no linear association. Okay, so we get that our R value is probably going to be close to zero when we have a scatter plot like this. Here's how we calculate the actual R value. 
First thing I need everybody to do is to turn their diagnostics on. For some reason, our calculators provide, make sure that we have to do this extra step so that we can provide this. Once you turn your diagnostics on, you're good to go. I'll show you. You're good to go for, for, for good, okay? Now, diagnostic on, you're going to go into your catalog. Your catalog is in blue above zero. So you go second, and then you press zero, and this is every single thing that you could type into your calculator. Now, to quickly go to the Ds, you have A, B, C, D in green. You can literally just press that button and you go to the Ds. And then you'll go down to find diagnostic on. Okay. Enter. Enter. To just say done. Okay. Should say done. Now you will go to stat, calculate, which is over to the right one, and you will go to linreg. We used to calculate one variable stats. We are going to calculate the what is called the linear regression or the line of best fit, which we will talk about more. But in this, uh, in this, in these results, you will also be able to find the R value. So you go down to linreg. You press enter. Now, for you guys, it's nice. It pops up and it says X list, Y list which is great, which means you can plug in different lists and we'll be able to do that. For my calculator, it just pops up linreg AX plus B. For you guys, if you want to find the linear regression or the R between L1 and L2, you already have it set up, just press enter so that you paste or calculate. So go down to enter until you get to calculate. What they did is they kind of pasted that you plugged in L1 and L2. If you do not have the table that shows up in your calculator, you can type this in or you can just leave it out and it will calculate the R value and the linear regression of just L1 and L2 just to start with. Okay? And here is the R value that we're looking at. What is this value very, very close to? Zero, which is what we wanted to see. Okay? For this situation, there is very limited correlation between weight of some person and their age. Well, let's look if there is a correlation between the weight of a person and the height of a person. Why don't we type into L3 the height? Go back to stat edit. Let's type in L3 the height. does not like to do numbers in a row. Okay? Now, if you were to graph this and you wanted to just graph weight versus height, you would go into stat plot and instead of doing L1 versus L2, you'd switch it and you'd say, let's do weight as L2 as your X list and let's do height as your L3. You can do weight versus height or you can do height versus weight. It really doesn't matter. And you'd be able to graph weight versus height. And I would zoom 9. Okay, let's make sure we have this in our calculator. Graphing. So you got L2, L3. So L2 is right here in blue, second L2. Okay? Everybody should see that. I want to see that in everybody's calculator. And we should see by looking at it what the correlation is going to be, right? Ms. Foco, is this a positive, negative, or no association? Positive, positive association. 
Ms. German, would you consider this to be a pretty strong association? Yeah, right, because if I drew a line, I'd be able to pass through a lot of those values. Well, we can calculate the correlation coefficient. We would go in to stats, calculate, lin reg. Now, in your table that pops up, instead of doing L1, L2, you're going to do L2, comma, L3. Okay, so in your X, put L2. In your Y, put L3. Press calculate, and you should get an R value of 0.915. If you don't have the table that pops up, you need to type it in like I do it right here. Linreg AX plus B. It'll show up, then type in L2, L3, and boom. Just like we suspected, between weight and height, weight. L2 versus height L3. I'll put that somewhere else. We saw that there was a strong positive, and we are confirmed by calculating our R value, which is 0.915 which is really, really close to 1, which means it's strong and positive. Okay? That's how you calculate the R value. Now, the R value sometimes can be deceiving. Okay? And I'll show you why if we go to the next page. Does anybody have any questions about calculating the correlation? Okay, that is like probably the most important thing you're going to use this unit is that lin reg table that we just used. So if you're comfortable using that lin reg and getting there and plugging in values and calculating the R, you'll see we're going to use the other things in lin reg in later classes, okay? It's important to know R has no units. It's not in centimeters. It's not going to be in inches. It does not matter what your units are. If you change your units, if you interchange X and Y, all of a sudden if I do weight versus height or height versus weight, depending on switching my x and y axis, the r would stay the same. Okay? Or if I have weight in pounds and I change it to weight in ounces, it's still going to be the same. Okay? All it does when you change uh, the units, it's just going to move everything, the standard deviation of the data set will be the same. It will not affect things at all, okay? However, correlation can be highly, highly affected by outliers. If they are influential. To judge a point's influence, you're going to look at the graph with and without the point and ask yourself a question. Would the line of best fit or the line that you try to pass through all the points, would it be the same with or without this point? If there is a great change in its correlation, it is influential. Okay? Let's take these two graphs. Both of these graphs contain outliers. They would both have the same type of line of best fit that would kind of pass through as many points as possible. It would look like this and it would look like this, right? So both appear to have uh, positive relationships. Now the question should be, if I removed the outlier, would my line of best fit change? If I remove this, would we still be able to see this positive association? No, it would not change. It would completely change. Now I look at this data set and it's like, well, do I do it like this? Do I go like this? Do I go like this? We would have a very different association. Okay? So because that changes it, we would call this outlier influential. Okay? 
if I took this outlier and removed it, would my line of best fits remain the same? Yes. So this outlier, we would say, is not influential. You know, maybe a little bit, but I'm not sure if it was much. Because let's see, I dropped that off. I would say, yeah, maybe it's a little bit more positive like that. So it would, but not as much as this guy, where we'd have to do a positive, but if it was gone, it would go to zero. No influence. Okay. Correlation only measures the strength of your linear relationships, not your curved relationships. A great example is the previous uh, page where we had that curved relationship. There is a strong relationship in that data set that is curved that made that U, but in terms of linear relationship, it is not strong at all. So we saw from back here, this is a strong relationship. You will be able to see a pattern. You will be able to predict things. However, in terms of a linear relationship, not strong at all. Right here, we have four data sets. This guy produces this graph. This guy produces this graph. This guy produces this graph. And this guy produces that graph. We could spend the time to type in all of these data sets and to calculate the R. When you look, the graphs are super different, right? Super different. The R's are all the same. However, what we have a situation is this one, yes, we would probably use a linear relationship. So I would use R. R is good. This one is a very strong, but this curved relationship, this is nonlinear, and it's almost super strong. If you found like, you know, some R value for that curved relationship, it would be close to 1. Here we can see, even though R is 0.82, if we just took out this outlier and that was gone, we'd have an R that would be close to 1 for this, just for this guy. But with that one outlier, all of a sudden my R changed drastically at that point, 82. Here we can see our data points pretty much are going straight up except for one outlier. It's very important to see things. And you could say, like, in certain situations like this, this, and this, we, probably, we wouldn't be using a linear relationship for all of the data points. We'd either remove our outliers and use a linear relationship or we'd use some sort of nonlinear relationship that we would talk about. Okay? So it's always important to see things before we go for it. Correlation is the not the same as causation. Two variables may be highly correlated but have no relationship between each other. The value of R tells you nothing about why X are related. Strong relations between X and Y may be due to a common response. Examples are, a typical example we've used is uh, ice cream sales and drownings. At one goes up, the other one's going to go up. That means the R is going to be positive. Probably pretty strong, right? As ice cream sales go up, we know that drownings go up. R is positive. That does not mean more ice cream sales cause more drownings. Turns out it's just a coincidence. It's a coincidence that as temperatures getting uh, going up, more people are swimming, more people are eating ice cream. That, therefore, more drownings, not one causing the other. We've talked about that a lot. So, one does not cause the other, even though they're related. They appear, they appear related. 
Okay, and that's it. That's the beginning. Your homework is out of the book. It is all about association, scatter plots, linear, strength, positive, negative, and correlation using your calculator to find the R value. Okay? I will put that up and you can start working on that right now. Thank you. Yes.